In my last video, I said that data removal services are fine to use as a safety net. These automated services are great, they're fine. They're fine. This immediately prompted a ton of questions, mostly people asking, what do I think of this particular data removal service? And a couple people even asked if I'm aware of any conflicts of interest with those services. I honestly did not expect this kind of a response from kind of a throwaway comment. So in this video, let's go ahead and take a deep dive into the data removal industry and talk about how you can steer clear of some of these pitfalls. For this video sponsor segment, I want to take a minute to plug a couple of new new oil services. First off, we have a Discord community now. Now, before you say anything, I know Discord is not privacy friendly. It asked for my real phone number within the first 24 hours of making an account, and it would not accept voice over IP. It's incredibly annoying. We mark this on the website and in Discord, we have a bot that posts a weekly reminder reminding people that Discord kind of sucks and they should consider something like Matrix instead. The reason we're opening a Discord community is because the new oil is aimed at beginners. Everybody is in a different place in their privacy journey, and that means that some people may still be using Discord. And if you're early on in your privacy journey, you still deserve community. So if you are a Discord user who is also interested in privacy, we are trying to create a community for you where you can come meet other like-minded people, ask questions, trade tips, get encouragement, and hopefully someday you'll move on to something more privacy respecting. But like I said, just because you're at that spot in your journey doesn't mean you don't deserve a community. Second, we finally have a PeerTube instance again. It is aperdatube.net and aperda is Latin for open, so like open source open tube we do not do any kind of tracking whatsoever and we are planning to open it up to signups you will not be able to upload videos but you will be able to comment and join the discussion hopefully that will be up by the time this video goes live but if not just know that we are working on that as quick as we can so again privacy community there's discord if you have that and there's a pair to tube which is a peer tube instance and allows you to watch videos without youtube tracking you be sure to check those out if either of those interest you if you haven't watched my last video yet you probably should it talks about what public data is and why you should want to opt out of it. You'll also be able to see that one throwaway comment that prompted this entire video. So in this video, I am primarily using a public Google document as my main source. Now, a quick disclaimer, that Google document was made by the folks over at Easy Opt Outs. So there is a little bit of a conflict of interest there, but as far as I can tell, I don't think there's any reason that it shouldn't be trusted. Just know that there is a little bit of a bias. I want to clarify, when I said these services should be used as safety nets, that's exactly what I mean. They should not be your sole line of defense. They are one tool in your arsenal among many other tools. And like every other tool, you have to do your research. You have to know which ones of these services are legit and which ones will actually meet your needs. Because threat modeling, everyone has a different need. With that, let's dive in and talk about how to vet these services and figure out which ones are right for you. First up, we have the obvious pitfalls that you should avoid. The biggest one of these being the fact that AI is not you. An AI will not recognize old social media posts, old photos or misspelled content or old names if you've had a name change. For example, if you grew up in Washington DC and a site falsely lists you as living in Seattle, Washington, the AI may not catch that even though everything else might be accurate. Remember, in my last video, I'm pretty sure I made a point of saying that sometimes when people are researching you, they're not relying on a single site. They're gathering the data from all the different sites and looking for the commonalities. So if I find one site that has a wrong address, but all the other information is correct, I know that I can probably ignore that address and still get useful information there. So if the AI misses this stuff, that could still be bad. On that note, not all services scrub all data. Some services have a limit to how many old addresses you can add or old names, and some of them don't even do addresses. They just do like names and email, for example. Lastly, these sites vary in how much data they actually remove. Some sites may only remove your data from 31 different data brokers and sources. Some of them go well into the triple digits. So already we can see not all of these sites are made equal. There are some less obvious pitfalls that you still need to keep in mind. For example, the pricing on these services varies wildly. Easy opt-outs is only $20 a year for a single person, while services like Spartacus and Removely are $250 a year. Furthermore, and this is a big one, the frequency scans vary. These sites are not 24 seven scanning for your data and submitting removal requests. Some of them do it as often as every 30 days, while some of them only do it every six months. If you have a low threat model, that may not be a big deal. But if you are say trying to hide from a very dedicated stalker, 
Six months can be a long time to wait for that data to get removed. Next, let's talk about conflicts of interest. Many of these sites use privacy violating trackers. For example, Delete Me, OneRep, and Spartacus all use Google Analytics, while Privacy Pros has a TikTok tracker for some reason. Granted, most of these kinds of things can be blocked by using a good privacy respecting browser and uBlock Origin, which is something I talked about in another video, but it still kind of sucks that these sites that are trying to help you regain your privacy won't even do simple things like switch to Matomo or Plausible for privacy respecting analytics. It sucks that they've got to go with services that track you, which is kind of counter to the point. Furthermore, some of them have some very questionable and permissive privacy policies. Some of them state, for example, that they store, quote, non-personal or anonymous information. And unfortunately, experts kind of agree that most anonymous information can be very easily de-anonymized to figure out who you are. So the idea of anonymous information is kind of not true and it disrespects your privacy. Some of them even say that they share your data, which is kind of double dipping and hypocritical. Like sure, it's not the same as posting your address publicly for anyone to see it, but they're still tracking you and selling that data. So you're paying them to remove your data, which they then turn around and sell. It's pretty messed up. Some of them also have questionable advertising and potential ties to the data brokers themselves, like Brand Yourself, IDX Privacy, and OneRep, for example. All of those either display ads on other data broker sites or link directly back to the sites themselves. For the record, the ad thing could just be an example of knowing your target audience. If I'm trying to opt out on Ben Verified, then I probably don't want my information public. So you, as the data removal service, would be pretty smart to advertise to people like me. Still, it does feel a little scummy and it's not the greatest look. Last but not least, a lot of these websites are funded by venture capital and outside investors, which means that these shareholders expect profits to continuously grow. That's just kind of how capitalism works. And for the record, that is not me wading into the whole capitalism versus communism economics debate. I'm not here for that. The point is, it is a fact that when somebody invests in something, they expect to see a return on their investment. And the way it is, profits are expected to continually rise and never stagnate, which means these people have to constantly ring in either new subscribers or new forms of investment. And that could potentially cause some friction down the road if that proves to be difficult. That's just something to keep in mind. So what are the takeaways here and how can we use this information to pick a good service? Well, number one, do your research. Look up reviews of these services, ask around on forums. These companies are going to ask for a lot of information from you. You need to make sure that you trust them. Number two, make sure they do what you need them to do. Like I mentioned, not all of these services remove the same amount of information or at the same frequency. So make sure whoever you're going with fits your threat model. Number three, these services are a safety net. I cannot drive that home enough. Like I said, they are going to miss things. Now it's up to you how you want to deploy them. If you wanna go remove all your data first and then use these as just kind of a run in the background because you're busy and you don't have time to do it constantly thing, that's fine. If you wanna run them first and then go through and clean up whatever they miss, that's also fine. But either way, you should not solely depend on these. Even if you have one of these services, you should still take time every so often to go through and research yourself and make sure they haven't missed anything. Again, they are running on AI and they're not always accurate. The Google Doc that I'm using as my primary source actually has a list of resources to do this manually if you want to. Also, it is not ready yet, but the new oil is trying to build a manual opt-out list of our own. Our hope is that it will be crowdsourced and constantly updated. So if you want to do this yourself, or if you just run into a particular site and you're not sure how to get the data removed, you will be able to use that resource. We are currently still collecting sources. So if you know of any, feel free to go to our GitLab and list them. Unfortunately, it's not ready for use at this time, at least not in an easy format. Hopefully that'll be out a little later this year. Last but not least, no, I will not make any recommendations or tell you what I think about X company. I'm sorry, I have always done this manually myself. It's only recently that I've started signing up for these services, but at this time I'm still new to signing up for these services and vetting them. So I don't really have any recommendations yet. It's too early for me to tell, is this one good, is that one good, etc. Maybe a little later I'll be able to weigh in on that, but right now it's just too early. So sorry, I'm not going to say, here's who I recommend, or if you post in the comments and say, what do you think of this company? I'm not going to give you an answer. I just, it's too early for me to tell. I'm sorry. Hopefully I have given you enough tools to do the research on your own and come to your own conclusions and pick a good service. But 
I'm just not in a position to name any services right now. Reminder that if you are looking for a privacy community, we have just opened our own Discord server. Again, Discord is not a privacy friendly platform itself. We have noted this on the website and we will be reminding users every week. However, we respect that everyone is in a different place in their privacy journey. If you are at the point where you are still using Discord, whether it's because you're new or because you have to, you are welcome to come and connect with other privacy people here. Second, we have finally reopened a PeerTube instance. So if you are looking for a privacy friendly alternative to watching these videos and get off YouTube, PeerTube is one of those options. We hope to have signups open very soon. For those of you who want to join and comment, you will not be able to upload videos, but you will be able to participate in the discussion. Hopefully this video has been helpful. I know, again, that comment sparked a lot of interest and a lot of questions and curiosity, and it's a really tricky industry that actually doesn't get talked about that much in the privacy community. A lot of people encourage you just to do it yourself, but like I said, these can be valuable as a backup and hopefully this has given you the tools to find the backup that is right for you. That's all I got for you guys this week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.